Alexis, thank you. Near the end of last school year, the Mount Horeb community was met with tragedy. A student showed up outside the middle school with a gun. That student was shot and killed by police and never got into the school. Just last week, the district attorney announced no charges were filed against the officers. The situation left a lasting imprint on the community. I had the chance to sit down with the Mount Horb superintendent to talk about lessons learned from the active shooter threat and how they're prepared to keep students and staff safe this year. As I was driving over, I saw a little girl running towards my car. Uh, she said, there's a shooting, there's a shooting. So very quickly, I recognized we were in a very different um, uh, emergency than we typically have. Superintendent Dr. Steve Salerno was on the scene at Mount Horb Middle School as chaos unfolded. It's out of the out of the body experience. You know, as he's going in as a freshman, he's already... Jen Reynolds has two children in the district. Her son, an eighth grader at the time, witnessed it all. He saw his peer, his classmate, approach the building. He saw the gun, which we now know later was a pellet gun, but no one knew that at the time, of course. Um, he, he heard people yell gun, he saw the gun, he heard people yell run, and he was one of many who ran. We developed a game plan very, very quickly in order to ensure that the safety of our children inside the building uh, was taken care of. The boy with the gun was never able to get into the school and was shot and killed by Mount Horror Police. I pray an awful lot for that family. Um, I worry a great deal for that family, um, and I don't, what he did that day um, obviously is, is just horrific and tragic. That's not the sum of who he was. Safety measures had been installed over the years, such as locked doors, a system for buzzing in guests, and a protective film on windows, thanks to a large capital referendum the community passed. The district also received a grant for critical incident mapping for law enforcement response, which was completed in the spring of 2023. We have spent some time, deliberately um, spent time working with the police department, with staff, uh, teachers, parents, to create a plan. And as they look ahead to a new year, their work continues. We've also spent time with the Department of Justice, Dane County Emergency Management, um, taking a taking a beat and talking about what we need to improve. Um, we're having members of the um, Department of Education come fly to Mount Horeb for the purposes of just talking to families about how do we help build resiliency in our young people. They'll also add a new member to the team. I'll let you in on a bit of an exclusive, Amber. Oh. Can, can I introduce you to Crumble? <laughs> Crumble is going to be our, 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 our support dog oh. in our district. Oh For Jen, the new school year brings confidence that her son and his peers knew what to do. And I had heard about how many of the students were taking care of one another in the various locations, and that he was someone who was very much doing that. And renewed hope in the safety of her kids. And I'm so grateful and thankful to the Mount Horb School District and every single staff member who was a hero that day. Our kids have been so brave and they've been asked to know so much that you and I didn't have to know when we were their age. Um, and how do, you, how do you build off that? How do you help them cope? How do you help them grow from this? Um, not forget it, because you can't forget it, but how do you help make them stronger? That meeting with the Department of Education will be August 27th. We have a link for families to register on our website, wkow.com.